Hi, it's Nancy. And David. This is Shaman Man. And today we're going to be talking about relationships. Mm. Uh, when you are energy sensitive or living with someone who's energy sensitive, there are challenges and things you have to work on together um, that maybe a couple who, you know, somebody isn't energy sensitive mm. or no one's energy sensitive uh, don't have to deal with. Mm. So stay tuned. <laughs> So let's talk about relationships with somebody who's empathic or has energy gifts. Um, Superhuman. Right. Super strong. Right. Super strong. Yeah. So anyhow, there, there are definitely challenges in any relationship. Mm. And there's sort of an added layer when there's someone in the relationship that has gifts, especially if they're very strong gifts. Um, so if you're an empath and you're in a relationship with someone – you may find it a little more challenging because you're feeling lots of things from that other person and you're not sure how really to take them, whether it's directed at you or mm. it's something else. Um, so that first issue, I would say communication is key. Mm -hmm. We have learned, um, David's an empath and I am not, and he'll feel some things and in the past he would kind of hold on to them um, and then later it would come out in different ways and then it could lead to an argument or a misunderstanding and so what we've learned is that David will just ask me straight out and say I feel like you're this I feel this from you is that related to me or is everything okay with us is anything going on that I should know about you know did something happen and I'll say no everything is fine you know it must be something else but it's it's more challenging particularly when you are awakened and you're just coming into your power and um, you're still not sure what you feel like as it relates to what everything around you feels like. So you're absorbed in or you, you, your persona is really a compilation, right, of, of all the stuff that you're feeling and then you transfer that out, right? So you start to say, well, I'm feeling this stuff. It must be mine and I'm feeling this stuff that I can't see. You're the only other guy in the room, so therefore it must be from you and you must be feeling that towards me. Right. And it isn't necessarily true at all. In fact, in most cases, it's not. So for me, and I know for David as well, I'll speak for you, mm. communicating about it and just keeping an open dialogue where there's no real emotion behind it, where it's just the two of us discussing it, is incredibly helpful. Um, the other thing that was very interesting, which you may not necessarily expect in being in a relationship with an empath, is that predictability is really important like knowing what to expect mm, because because there's a lot of emotion and feelings and soaking up of things empaths don't feel like there's a lot of control in the world like they have control so they like to te they tend to want to control things mm. or tend to want to have structure a lot of structure right to define things it helps a lot if you're functioning right if you're a functioning <laughs> right. empath you know so you can hold a job you can do stuff you can get around um, then you'll build a lot of structure. And so a lot of people call that um, kind of OCD or a lot of compulsiveness. But when you're feeling other stuff that you can't, you know, you're feeling stuff you can't see, you can't really attach value to, it's hard to compare against other than what you felt, you know, from one feeling to the next or whatever. Uh, you have to have that structure and definition in some ways to help keep you grounded here or bound here in some way so you can function and you kind of know what to expect. So like what we often found is David would, before David even knew he was an empath, he would always ask me a lot of questions before we'd be going out. And I didn't understand it. Like he'd say, well, when are we leaving? When are we going to get back? Who's going to be there? How do you think it's going to play out? And at first it would frustrate me. It's like, I don't know. We're just going to a party and there's going to be people there and we'll leave when we feel like we've had enough time to be there. And then, you know, after the party, we'd get in the car and there would be a lot of like dumping of emotion because he was picking up on everybody there and mm. didn't even know what was going on. And so it made social outings more challenging. But then as we began to understand his gifts more and he began to work with them, he would say to me, you know, it really helps me to know what to expect. It really helps me to know we're going to leave at this time. Mm -hmm. It should be done around this time. These are the kinds of people who are going to be there and this is the kind of party it's going to be. And, you know, when you're not an empath, you kind of take for granted, like, well, we'll have drinks and then we'll have dinner and the empath needs to know these things. And mm. so they're not trying to be controlling and anal or ruin the good time. It just helps them to know what to expect 
so they can kind of ease up a little bit and try and enjoy the evening more. Yeah, and it's not even, you know, I may I may have hassled Nancy more on more detail than the normal person just because of how I am, but it's really about milestones. You know, if, if you're going to be gone for two or three hours, as an empath, um, we do this with our son as well, I mean, it's good to know to kind of say, here are our milestones. We're going to get there, this has to happen, we eat, and we do that, whatever. So you, So it's not even necessarily time, it's just also... Just key milestones so you're able to know the progression because you're feeling you're taking in all of the stimulus and you want to kind of stay on track, right? And, and, and so you can in, in enjoy yourself or, or at least engage uh, is helpful. So and, Well, and the third thing also is like um, a lot of times if you're in a social situation with an empath, it's harder for them to understand the social context of something. So... If, and if this is this probably was the most tricky one for me to understand is we go to a party we're sitting around the dinner Sounds table. Sounds like we're going to a lot of parties. We I are. Don't, I, I don't I'm, remember that either. I don't either. So we go to we go to have dinner with some friends and there's a few couples, whatever, and then we leave. Mm -hmm. And David will say to me, "Do you think everything went all right?" Oh, I see what you're saying. And I'll say, "Well, what do you mean? You were there too. We had a great time. It was lots of laughs, and everyone was talking about all kinds of stuff, and it felt really good. And I'd say it was a great dinner party, mm -hmm. but for him." You know, he, it's hard for him, and you can obviously weigh in on this, but it's harder for him to kind of weigh the social context of what his expectation is and what he should be saying or feeling in relation to how everyone else is feeling because he's taking in so much. It's like, did everything go all right? You know? Well, you, you, you also like your, uh, because there's not a lot of connectivity to where you're at necessarily in a direct way. Um, you're, and I don't want to say you're playing a role because you're not, but you know what I'm saying? You're, you're, uh, you're not necessarily feeling what everyone else is feeling. I'm going to say the average person or whatever. So, mm -hmm. so uh, you don't have you're – not, you're not engaged in that way. You don't have that connectivity. So you're, you're kind of like going through what you think you should do or what's appropriate or whatever else, but it's not necessarily like a feeling and like a natural thing. It doesn't flow ways. as easily. Yeah, it doesn't flow because yeah. you're taking in all this other stuff. And so you're just and trying to act normal and act normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So meanwhile, you know, while I'm sitting across the table from Betty and, you know, I know that she has issues going on and there was an argument right before we got there and she brings all that with us, you know, that's, that's what I'm mm -hmm. taking in. I'm not taking necessarily in the natural thing that of course I would, you know, sit here and act this way and be like this or say that. Uh, it's a, so so it's a little different. It's yeah. a little different. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, um, it's a little different, so I don't, right? Right. It's, so I guess really like the crux of it all is communication is really key. So for the empath side, sharing how you're feeling and being able to express things the best that you can mm -hmm. to make the other person understand. And then as the person who's not an empath, not being defensive about things mm -hmm. is really critical. Like understanding it really isn't about you um, and just – Try to be understanding, and when something occurs, put yourself in their position and say, why are they asking me this, or why is this important? Because it's very different. It's a very different experience for an empath, mm. and you can't really understand it if you don't have those gifts. I mean, David tries to explain it to me all the time, and I'm sensitive, and I feel things, but not at the level that he does. And so I just I try to put myself in his position, but it's very difficult to fully understand. But for us, the way our relationship has gotten you know, so warm and open and caring and, and good is from us talking about things all the time and just sharing what's going on and him being willing to say, you know, I'm really struggling right now and I don't think I can go out tonight. I know we had these plans, but if I go, it's going to push me to a place where I'm just not going to really have a great weekend. It's going to twerk my whole weekend. Like I really need I really need tonight off. It's been a busy week, and I really just need some rest. And also knowing that maybe Friday night is not the best night to go out because you've had the whole week, and you need just a day, and Saturday's better. You know, things like that. But Patterns. I, but I want to stress this. This isn't a victim. This isn't a, you know, oh, Nancy, you know, I feel terrible. Oh, Nancy, I was, you know, in the party, felt this from Betty, and that's from No, Steve. not at all. You know, mm -hmm. I want to stress that. This isn't you don't, you know, you don't, this isn't, when you're communicating as an empath also, this isn't like you're, you know the conversation can't revolve around all your needs either, so it's not a, it's it's not that, uh, it's you trying to be constructive, and sometimes it's kind of like a dream interpretation, where you have this dream and then you share that, 
and the other person gives you insight that you wouldn't have had mm -hmm. about that dream. Well, as an empath, as and to have a partner like I do, uh, is so is so puts me at such an advantage because it's not just me by myself trying to figure out stuff and what's real, but I can actually have a a comparison. I can ask her, was this correct or not? She knows my character. She knows my intent. So that helps me. So, you know, if I'm <clears throat> kind of cycling the drain or I'm in a situation where I'm not being me, you know, she really knows that and is able to grab me or pinch me or do something to say, hey, man, you're, this isn't you, you know, like kind of, hey, and that's really helpful sometimes. So I want to stress that in the dialogue here that we're sharing is, it's not a whine. It's not a dump fest. It's not a. It's really more empowering. It's like yeah. it's like working on together. It, yeah, to to actually truly be in it together and to understand each other because it's there are challenges for both of you and if you support each other, it can be really great. It really you can. You can really help each other out and understand each other and come from a really loving place. And and, and when you trust it, so what's what's also interesting is once you trust it as the empath, then your partner starts to trust in your gifts and abilities too. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really interesting because ultimately, as you learn to uh, wield your power, uh, you learn that uh, this was really a gift, that this is added information, it's extrasensory perception. And so uh, having somebody else who, you know, you weren't taught that, I wasn't taught that, this is just now where people are really starting to discuss it and say that they're, you know, this is, this is it and here's some technique and steps uh, to be able to go forward with that. And at this stage right now, um, To f just when you have your partner, I want to stress the fact that it's you really want to treat them with some extra sensitivity, and that doesn't mean that you don't you're not able to be you or show show kind of your dark side, so to speak. But it does mean that you need to give them a little extra credit because you know they're involved in this with you too. As you know, you're taking stuff in and then you're converting it back out. So I just I just want to stress with everything that we've said, really important not to poop on your partner. <laughs> Bottom line. <laughs> and that's a bumper Communication is key. Don't, Don't poop, poop on your partner. On your partner. We hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. See you again. Take care.